So welcome to this video, my name is Alex. And many people are looking at what's happening in the world at the moment and they are seeing things pessimistically. And that to a large extent is the result of the media. The media is poisoning our minds with negative visions. It is turning us against each other. It is creating enmity and hostility and anger, so much anger, despair, pessimism and hopelessness. And you'd be amazed, you'd be amazed how your perspective on the world would change if you switched off all your screens, stop looking at the media, social media, stop checking on the news, watching TV programs. If you switched it all off just for five days and instead spend as much time as you can in nature, as much time as you can with your children, with your family, or helping the people around you, just being in the world, being in nature, appreciating what this beautiful world has to offer. Because this world is paradise. All you have to do is go into a forest or on a sunny day or go into a beautiful meadow where there's butterflies and birds singing or go to the ocean, to the seaside and feel the energy, feel the power of the ocean, swim in the water, or swim in a river. These kind of things remind us how beautiful this world is. We tend to conceptualize everything and turn everything into a kind of two-dimensional map so that we can understand this world. But the greatest gifts of living on this planet are experiential. So we have to jump into the ocean to appreciate what the ocean is about. We have to walk in the trees and hear the birds singing to understand what nature is really about. We have to walk up to the top of a mountain and feel the sun beating down on us and feel the blood pumping through our body to realize what it means to be alive, to have energy flowing through our body, to have a body which can feel strong and alive and enthusiastic. And this is the biggest problem which I, I see which is happening right now, especially with the influence of the media, as I said, being so negative and poisoning people's minds, is that people are very, getting very disconnected from their sense of enthusiasm. And our sense of enthusiasm is so vital to us. It's like a powerhouse of motivation. It gives us our drive. It makes us want to get up in the morning and uh, it gives us energy. If we have enthusiasm, we are connected to something which gives us unlimited energy. And that's why enthusiasm is so, so important. And it is possible for you, for anybody, to find what it is that gives you enthusiasm. Now it can be a creative project, it can be communicating with people, but the best thing to get enthusiastic about is helping people. Using your skills, your gifts, your God-given talents, your interests to try and make other people's lives better, try and help other people. Even just listening to other people and doing your best to relieve them from their burdens, doing your best to let them know that you care about them, that they're important. This is so rewarding. We forget how rewarding it is to help other people, to listen to other people, to genuinely care about other people's welfare and try and reach a hand out and lift them up, give them encouragement, give them hope, give them something to be enthusiastic about. And for me, this is, um, this is the secret, is to is to remind ourselves how good it feels to help other people, how good it feels to lift people up, to give them some good news, to give them hope, to inspire other people. It feels so good. It's so rewarding because you're passing on something to the heart of another human being. You're passing on your compassion and care to the heart of another human being. And that heart is uplifted. That heart is... Um, kind of set on fire, transformed, illuminated by your love, by your compassion. When you show that to somebody, when you show the goodness of your heart to another human being, it is impossible to put into words what it does for that person. Impossible. Because it is love that heals. And there's a lot of healing that needs to occur on this planet, as I'm sure you're aware. But we don't do it by trying to tell people they're wrong about this and educate them about that and tell them how they've got it all wrong and how they're, you know, believing loads of lies and 
you can't change someone by telling them where they're wrong, going wrong. It's love, it's love which enables people to rise above their fear, rise above their negativity, rise above their sense of hopelessness. Because when you see someone, when you see someone who is passionate, when, someone, when you see someone who cares, when you see someone who is not defeated and who is willing to share their strength with you, then that is very inspiring. That is very uplifting. It's very profound. It's impossible to put into words. I'm doing my best in this video. But what I'm trying to tell you is that there is a million people around you who need something you've got. They're in a worse situation than you. They're losing hope. They're getting sucked into despair and pessimism and misery. And you have something in your heart. You have care and compassion and concern for those people. Now you may have forgotten. You might have convinced yourself that you don't really care anymore. People are stupid. People are, people are beyond salvation. People are just, you can't help people. You may have become cynical and uh, skeptic, skeptical about people's ability to make intelligent decisions. And, but don't stop caring. Please don't stop caring about people because the care in your heart is the most valuable thing in this universe. And I'm not exaggerating. The care you have in your heart for another person or for another animal, another creature, the care and concern you have in your heart is what is desperately needed now across the globe more than ever before. Because people are getting consumed with their own security and when people get concerned with their own security, consumed in their own thoughts about their safety and their providence, their well-being, their ability to, um, to get what they need, then they forget everybody else, they forget who else might need their help, they, be, they get tunnel vision about their own life, about what they need and they forget that they are here to help others, they forget to look around them, they forget to care about others. So please don't be one of those people. You may be afraid of the, for the future. You may be concerned about what's going to happen. And, but the antidote, the antidote to your kind of self-obsessed reality of security and insecurity and fear is to take all your attention off yourself. Stop thinking about yourself and lift somebody up. Reach out to someone who you know is worse than you, who you know is slipping into negativity, feeling hopeless, feeling despairing. It's only when we reach out to others that we remember why we are here. So I can say all these things and you can say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know all this stuff. I've heard it all before. I know that my job is to help other people. I know that, you know, I know that I'm, I'm meant to be selfless and compassionate, blah, blah, blah but I've really got more important things to deal with. Well, it's only through actually turning our attention to others, actually giving our time, actually listening to other people, actually communicating, taking the time, prioritizing the people around us because we prioritize so many other things. We get concerned with our own sharing our own message, for example, or telling people what we think is the truth or concerned with our own um, family, our own well-being, you know, our own income and our own uh, needs and desires, that the well-being of others gets relegated way, way down our priority list. And actually, it should be at the very top of our priority list. Imagine living in a world where all the people on the planet had the top priority to be concerned about those around them. Their top priority was to see if anyone around them needed help, if anyone around them was struggling, wouldn't that be beautiful? Wouldn't that be some kind of utopia, a planet full of loving people who are not obsessed with themselves, but who are looking around and saying, who can I help? Who needs my help? And the only way that occurs is by you and me being the example. 
That will not happen by you protesting on the streets or you telling people online how wrong they are and how judgmental they are and how deluded they are or, or telling people all the bad things which are happening. It will only happen by you becoming an example of someone who is not obsessed with their own thoughts and desires and fears, but someone who is driven by the desire to help others, who is driven by a genuine concern, a genuine enthusiasm to lift other people up. Because when we all do this, when we all get together, when we all prioritise reaching out to others, lifting them up, giving them inspiration, giving them hope, giving them a sense of optimism, then things change very quickly. Suddenly there's this growing sense of positivity. And this is needed more than ever because there is, at the moment, the media is doing its best to create a tidal wave of negativity and pessimism and hopelessness, as you're probably aware. And you can probably see around you, the people around you or people you know are getting pulled into this negativity, pulled into this dark vision of the future, some kind of um, oppressive dystopia that's only dark and only negative and only holds suffering for us all. People are allowing their minds to be consumed by that vision. But that vision is coming from the media and those who, the powerful people who control the media and who want you to have a mind full of fear, a mind full of conflict, a mind full of anger and darkness. Whereas the greater force, which some call God, which I call God, the greater force of intelligent power, consciousness, and love, wants your mind full of light. It wants you to see the direction you need to go in. It wants you to focus on the light and move in that direction. And that direction is the direction of increasing faith, increasing trust, increasing joy, because joy comes from trust. When you trust completely, you cannot be afraid. When you have complete trust, that you'll be looked after and protected. You cannot be afraid because your trust is complete. There is no doubt. And this is what we all need to cultivate. Complete trust that we will be protected. We will be provided for. There is no reason to fear. And that our top priority, and I mean our top priority, should be keeping our mind in the light. Not allowing negativity and pessimism to encroach on this sanctuary of our mind, that we keep our mind focused on the light, focused on the potential. Because the media wants you focused on the worst case scenario, and how, how everything is going to go downhill, how everything is going to be bleak and miserable and hopeless. They want you thinking that way. God wants you thinking in terms of we can, we can help each other. We can make a difference. We can lift people up. We can rescue people who are getting pulled into the darkness. We can rescue people who've, who are giving up hope, who are losing hope and giving up. Their hearts being overcome by hopelessness and misery. We can help those people with strength and power and passion and enthusiasm. We can help those people. Now that's how I feel. I'm not concerned about what happens out there. I'm not concerned about what the governments are doing or because I trust that I'm protected and provided for. I trust that I'm safe and I experience that. This isn't just some kind of blind faith. You experience safety when you trust that you are safe. And this creates a kind of an, an aura, a bubble of light around you which comes from your heart. This sense of trust enables the light of God to flow through your mind, through your heart, so you're protected by this bubble of light and no darkness can come in because darkness has to enter your mind first. If you, if you do not open the door to negative thoughts and fearful thoughts, if you keep that door firmly closed and say, no, I'm not going to believe those dark thoughts or negative thoughts. I'm going to trust. I'm going to stay in faith. I'm going to stay in peace. And I'm, going to, I'm going to be sure. I'm going to be I'm going to have faith that I am safe. And then your reality becomes more illuminated. Your reality becomes lighter. You, you just sense this aura of light and safety around you. And that comes from God. And it's very real. It's a spiritual, 
It's like our spiritual protection. And we have to activate that by allowing ourselves to feel safe. Ignoring all the negative, fearful thoughts. Ignoring all the things which tell us there is threat around every corner, that doom and disaster are coming. Ignore them. Relax your heart. Let your heart be at peace. Let go of the fear. And trust that God is looking after you. Ask God. If you don't trust God, then ask God to bring safety and peace into your heart, because He will. Ask God to bring you peace. Tell Him you're scared. Tell Him all the things you're afraid of. And say, please, I need you to make me feel safe. I need you to bring peace and safety into my heart. And He will. I guarantee it. If you honestly and genuinely ask and talk to God and tell Him what you need, then you will receive it. You will receive the peace you need.